Have you ever listened to someone talk about fragrances or candles and they use terms that you've never heard before? You kind of sit there and go along with it like, yeah, that's some good hot throw, but deep down, they're speaking a different language. Some terms are self-explanatory where you can kind of piece together what they mean and some terms are a bit confusing. In this video, I'm going to give you the goods on the simplest of terms to the more not so simple terms. So you know the right questions to ask whether you're buying a luxury candle for the first time or you just want to be more well versed in conversations about home fragrances. I'm Rakima. Welcome to Detail Dream, where the primary focus is to expose you to the expansive world of luxury goods for your home. Let's talk candles. I want to start with the most simple term, but it's by far the most important, wax. What would a candle be without it, right? Now, not all waxes are the same, which is very important when buying luxury candles. I won't go into specifics about each wax, but I will list them in importance of my preferences. There's vegetable, coconut, beeswax, rapeseed, biodegradable botanical, palm, soy, and paraffin wax. It is also very common to see a couple of these waxes mixed together because each wax has its own pros and cons. You will also see waxes mixed with EO or FO, also known as essential oils or fragrance oils. Essential oils are derived from organic plant matter and has the strongest scent from whatever plant was used to make it. This oil is called essential due to the fact that it has the essence of a plant or flower. I would much prefer essential oils over fragrance oils, which is more synthetic with chemical compounds. But since fragrance oil is synthetic, it performs 10 times better than essential oils, unfortunately. So it's kind of a decision of do you want more sustainable or do you want more performance? Which brings me to the next term known as performance, which is just knowing how well a candle smells while it's burning. The better you smell a scent while it's burning, the better, in my opinion. The performance is tied into what is known as cold throw and hot throw, which is the release of fragrance. The cold throw is basically how well can you smell a candle when it's not lit at room temperature. And in contrary, the hot throw is how well can you smell a candle while it's burning. Theoretically, the cold throw would not be as good as the hot throw, but for a good luxury candle, both should perform well. And that's due to the quality of wax and the wick, which is a bundle of fibers that are twisted, braided, or woven of soft cotton threads. That's made to be burned to melt the wax, and a good wick is essential to a candle. There are many different types of wicks, but the most common that you will come across are wooden wicks and cotton wicks. There is an entire science behind knowing how different wicks work in different waxes. I won't get into that in this video, but let me know if that's something that you will want to know more about. Because the relationship between the wax and the wick is very important. If both the wax and wick are in harmony, the candle will burn beautiful and even all the way through. If the wick is not happy in this relationship, something called mushrooming will occur after burning. And it happens when the excess carbon builds up on the wick from the wax not burning fast enough to keep up. That's why it's vital that the correct wick is used, especially for luxury candles. This also causes all kinds of problems if not fixed, like an enlarged flame which results in soot buildup around the candle vessel. Another cause for a wick mushrooming is what's known as burn time. If you're letting your candle burn for more than four hours at a time, carbon will begin to collect on the wick. I for one know it's tempting to let that amazing smelling candle burn for as long as possible. But at the three hour mark, it's time to give it a break. Don't worry, you can light it again tomorrow. You don't want to overwork the candle. And vice versa, if you extinguish the candle too soon, then you could trigger something called tunneling. When you see your candle burning down the middle of the wax and leaving the edges untouched, then it's trying to tunnel. I made a video on how to stop tunneling, and if you want to know more about it, I will link that video in the description below. One thing I do not play about is letting wax go to waste. I will not have it. I said we will not have it all. I'm going to make sure I get every drop from these candles. But tunneling can happen to any candle, regardless of price and quality. Fortunately, there are many things that you can do to make sure that your candle burns evenly, starting with what is known as the first burn. The first burn is by far the most important of a candle's life. Letting the wax melt to the edge of the vessel will ensure that the wax melts evenly all the way through, and the melt pool, which refers to the size of the pool of the melted wax from a burning candle and it's an indication of how well the wax is melting. The larger the melt pool, the further the scent will be thrown. If the wax doesn't melt to the edge, then something called candle memory will occur. It starts with the first burn, which creates a pattern or memory for each burn thereafter, which is why the first burn is vital. You also want to make sure that you're using a wick trimmer after each burn. A wick trimmer basically cuts off the excess burnt wick, which will allow the candle to burn more clean and even the next time you light it. 
and it will avoid any bad candle memory. Taking care of the wick will give you an amazing burning experience. And when it's time to extinguish the candle, you can use either the wick snuffer or the wick dipper. You have to keep your candles maintained, especially if it's a scent that you love. Your favorite scent is broken down into what is called an olfactory pyramid which forms the structure of a scent. It's split into three different tiers in terms of intensity that brings life to a scent. The top notes are usually the calm notes. They're like the first responders, the introduction between you and the candle. They most often consist of fresh citrus notes. The heart notes, also known as mid notes, is where you will find the personality of a scent. You will usually find the more playful notes in this tier. And then there are the bass notes the most intense, the most heavy notes of a scent. The base notes are what makes or break a candle in my opinion. This tier is where the dark notes live and if done correctly, could take a candle to that next level. Preserving your favorite scents for as long as possible is very important. Using something called a glass cloche or bell jar will ensure that your candle stays dust free and is a great way to smell all of the notes in a scent. You're more than likely just smelling the top notes when you pick up a candle to sniff it. Sniffing from the cloche will give you an accurate smell of the scent and plus it looks really nice that's why when you go into most luxury candle shops you will see the display candles under a glass cloche and there are many different types of candles that you normally wouldn't see under a cloche like pillar taper or tea light candles those types of candles are normally used for decorations like the beauties behind me and they're on what's called a candle holder which are just decorative pieces to showcase your candles. I got both the taper candles and the brass candle holders from CB2. I hope I didn't overwhelm you with these terms. Thankfully, there's a replay and rewind button. Some of these terms can also be used for fragrances or room sprays, which if you haven't yet seen my Diptyque room spray review, you might want to check it out. I'm sure I missed a few terms, so let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. I will catch you in the next video.